How's it going, folks? Me again, armed this time with a green tea. Wow, mixing it up a bit here. Very soothing drink, isn't it? Soothes the soul. A bit like Kelly Reichardt's first cow. We're reviewing First Cow. I saw it, okay? It's been on my radar for a while. I finally saw it. I don't remember a time I didn't think, ah, when's First Cow coming out? It's It's been coming out forever, I feel like. 2019 is the year next to it on IMDb. This is another one similar to Minari, which I just reviewed as well. Oh, cheeky. Well, I really wish I'd seen it before I'd done my 2020 list um, because it would have made it on there. I really, really loved First Cow. So let's talk about why, I guess. That's why we're all here. So as I said, First Cow is directed by Kelly Reichard. It's an A24 film. I don't need to explain why that excites me. And it is a simple story, really, at the heart of it. It is about two men um, who, back in ye old times, start a sort of, call it, a, I guess, a business endeavor. Um, with some uh, milk from a cow. Not selling it, but I don't really want to say much more. It's just a really genuinely heartwarming uh, and sincere film, this. And I love me a genuine, sincere, heartwarming film, especially in times like this. But I was immediately incredibly impressed with the sort of the, the patience of the storytelling here. I think a lot of people are going to see that as just straight up slow and maybe dull. I, I'm not going to sit here and say I can't understand why people think that about this film. It's very slow paced. But for me, at least, that never really got in the way of, of me connecting with the story and the characters here. In fact, it's patience and the way it sort of delicately just sort of nudges you through its story. It is one of the most impressive things about it and one of the things that makes it feel so unique. I really like Rykard's approach to this story, which is, as I said, just to sort of nudge you along, you know? If, if film editing is a way of guiding you through a film, Kelly Reichardt's editing here, and, and she did edit the film as well as direct it, which I thought was kind of cool as well. Her editing is like a kind of like, get on in there and just wander around the film if you want. And I like the way that she kind of lets you as an audience just, just piece it all together, you know? I guess one of the sort of side effects of that is that to some viewers you might watch it and just feel like the story it is asking for a little bit more or, or that it's a little bit I, I, simple, I guess? But the simplicity is what works about this film. It lets you sit with these characters. And I found myself getting really engrossed in the central relationship of the film, which is between these two men that meet each other uh, in these circumstances. The lead, I guess, is played by John Magaro who gives a really kind of quiet and gentle performance, which absolutely complements the gentleness of the rest of the film. The editing, the way it's shot, the way it's all pieced together. It all complements itself really, really well. But alongside him is Orion Lee, and their relationship is really interesting, and it's never exploited too much in the film. Because there's a big thread of sort of, I guess, brotherhood, and if you want to call it a bromance, you could do that, I think. You could argue this is a bromance film. I'm not gonna do it, but you could do. But I think under lesser directors, that would just become the thing of the film. You're like, oh, it's a bromance film. And I like that this film is sort of about that. It is about their relationship and, and you know, their working relationship, but also the two of them and their friendship. But it just nudges you into that, you know? It, it's not like, hey, these two people, they bump into each other. What great buddy old pals. Everyone having a good old time here. It earns it, which I think is, is quite a key distinction and is much more satisfying, I think. And she does such a good job of creating a world in this film, of, of giving the impression that all of the people that we see from the outskirts, the secondary characters, the people in the background of shots, it always feels like these people are living their own lives, their own stories, you know? And that can be played to really dramatic effect at certain points. It's as simple as just seeing someone get cut into in the queue and the camera lingering on that person's face as they realize they they just missed out on something because someone cut in front of them. It's a tiny moment, but under Kelly Reichardt's direction, it feels big and, and, and you care for this character that I've literally just seen for about 10, 20 seconds in front of me. It's a gorgeous film as well. I mean, every shot of this, I was like, huh, that's some light. 
and I want to bathe in it, please. I also really like the kind of subtle use of soundtrack in the film. There's not really a soundtrack or a score to the film, but music does play a part at certain points. And when it does come in, I thought it really complemented what was happening on screen terrifically. I, I'm a sucker for that kind of music. Makes me feel warm, makes me want to go on a nice long walk outside. I can dig it. And I also really, really liked the way this film ended. There's a fantastic cut at the end of this film, um, which just works perfectly. It is exhibit A in w knowing when to cut to black. Yes, it's a sort of ending as well, which really ties things up, I thought. I, I think it puts things into perspective um, and retrospectively makes a lot of the film work because I think if, if I was going to come up with any big criticism with First Cow, I think I could very easily narrow in on the plot. You know, you, you kind of know where it's going to go. And in many ways, it just sort of goes along that path. I can understand why that can feel quite unsatisfying for people. And there are definitely certain points in the film where I do feel like I started to feel a little bit like that. Luckily, it saved itself for me and I really like where it ended up going in the end. But I do think that is definitely one of the side effects of being so patient with your story and your film is that if you give an audience, I guess, too much time to sit with not a lot happening, they can start to want certain things and when those wants aren't filled or they don't happen in the end of the film, it can feel a little bit unsatisfying. But as I said, for me, it didn't really end up doing that. And I think it really worked where it ended up going. And ultimately, I found myself feeling like I did with something like Roma, um, which is to say that I kind of didn't really want it to end in that I wanted to spend a lot more time with these characters in the world that they're in in the film, which is absolutely what you want. I mean, what, el what else do you, what else? Anyone? You can't say that. I'm not saying it. Having conversations with no one again, 2021 for you. So yeah, I just thought First Cow was a really, really heartwarming and lovely little gem of a film. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. But what about you guys? Have you seen First Cow yet? It seems like it's been releasing everywhere forever now. I think it comes out in May over here in the UK. So if you haven't seen it, get excited for it. But if you have checked it out, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat or not. Do what you want down there. Accept that. That is, don't do that. That's weird. See you guys very soon for some more thoughts on films which I happen to peruse with my eyeballs. There's a few of them. They're coming. They're coming. Name of your first sex tape. <laughs>